You will bring about the destruction. You will bring about the destruction. In the heart of Southeast Asia lies a nation of unparalleled beauty and resilience, but beneath the surface, a complex challenges threatens the very fabric of this archipelago. Join me on a journey as I uncover the untold stories behind the title, The Philippines Has Fallen. Part 1. Brief History of the Philippines Spanish Colonization of the Philippines The Philippines is named after King Philip II of Spain and it was a Spanish colony for over 300 years. Today, the Philippines is an archipelago of 7,000 islands. The first people in the Philippines were hunter and gatherers. But between 3000 BC and 2000 BC, people learned to farm. They grew rice and domesticated animals. From the 10th AD century, Filipinos traded with China, and by the 12th century AD, Arab merchants reached the Philippines and they introduced Islam. Then, in 1521, Ferdinand Magellan sailed across the Pacific. He landed in the Philippines and claimed them for Spain. Magellan baptized a chief called Hamabon and hoped to make him a puppet ruler on behalf of the Spanish crown. Magellan demanded that other chiefs submit to Hamabon, but one chief named Lapu-Lapu refused. Magellan led a force to crush him. But the Spanish soldiers were scattered and Magellan was killed. The Spaniards did not gain a foothold in the Philippines until 1565, when Miguel Lopez de Legazpe led an expedition, which built a fort in Cebu. Later in 1571, the Spaniards landed in Luzon. Here they built the city of Intramuros, later called Manila, which became the capital of the Philippines. Years passed until 1762. The British captured Manila. They held it for two years, but they handed it back in the 1764, under the terms of the Treaty of Paris, signed in 1763, the Philippines in the 19th century. In 1872, there was a rebellion in Cavite, but it was quickly crushed. However, nationalist feelings continued to grow, helped by a writer named Jose Rizal. In 1892, Jose Rizal founded a movement called Liga Filipina, which called for reform rather than revolution. As a result, Rizal was arrested and exiled to the Beaton in Mindanao. Meanwhile, Andres Bonifacio formed a more extreme organization called the Katipunan. In August 1896, they began a revolution. Rizal was accused of supporting the revolution, although he did not, and he was executed on December 30, 1896. Yet his execution merely inflamed Filipino opinion, and the revolution grew. Then in 1898 came the war between USA and Spain. On April 30th, 1898, the Americans defeated the Spanish fleet in Manila Bay. Meanwhile, Filipino revolutionaries surrounded Manila. Their leader, Emilio Aguinaldo, declared the Philippines independent on June 12th. However, as part of the peace treaty, Spain ceded the Philippines to the USA. The Americans planned to take over. The war between American forces in Manila and Filipinos began on February 4, 1899. The Filipino-American War lasted until 1902, when Aguinaldo was captured. American rule in the Philippines was brutal. They called their policy benevolent assimilation. They wanted to Americanize the Filipinos, but they never quite succeeded. In 1935, the Philippines were made a Commonwealth nation. Manuel Quezon became president. America promised that the Philippines would become completely independent in 1945. However, in December 1941, Japan attacked the U.S. fleet at Pearl Harbor. On December 10, 1941, Japanese troops invaded the Philippines. They captured Manila on January 2, 1941. All of the Philippines were in Japanese hands. But American troops returned to the Philippines in October 1944. They recaptured Manila in February 1945. The Philippines became independent on July 4, 1946. 
Manuel Rojas was the first president of the newly independent nation. Conflict in the South China Sea Over the last 10 years, the conflict in the South China Sea has been constantly in the spotlight. As China builds islands in the middle of the South China Sea, once underwater reefs have become sandy islands with airfields, roads, buildings, and bases for missile systems. In less than two years, China has turned seven reefs into seven military bases, making the South China Sea one of the most contentious areas of sea in the world. Its importance is not limited to that. The ocean area is estimated to contain 11 billion barrels of oil, 190 trillion cubic feet of natural gas. Even more importantly, roughly 30% of the global maritime trade passes through the South China Sea on its way to the highly trafficked ports in Southeast Asia. Thanks to these aspects, the South China Sea is a contested maritime area which is subject to claims of partly possession by five countries. The conflict among the five states, namely the Philippines, Vietnam, China, Brunei, Taiwan, and Malaysia, has remained unresolved for decades. The claimant states have divergent and sometimes overlapping territorial claims based on a variety of historical and geographical data. For instance, China currently claims over 80% of the islands, while Vietnam claims entire sovereignty over the Spratly Islands. The main conflict in the South China Sea dates back to 1279, when China drew a territorial map of its influence that included the entire South China Sea. Since then, control over the region has changed hands between regional powers and later colonial states. However, most people agree that the bulk of the current problems stem from the 1951 San Francisco Treaty, which followed Japan's defeat in World War II. Within the terms of its surrender, Japan gave up its right to its islands in the South China Sea, leaving a power vacuum in the region. No country was granted sovereignty over these waters, and China asserted its advantage by submitting the now infamous Nine Dotted Line claim, covering almost the entire South China Sea in 1947. This line became its official claim and is known today as the Nine Dash Line. In 1982, the United Nations law established the exclusive economic zones. Right after, China reiterated its Nine Dash Line, refusing to clarify the limits of this line and rejecting the claims of other claimant countries. Ever since, tensions have built up over who owns the South China Sea. In the meantime, the conflict has focused on two islands, Spartly and Parasols, an archipelago located in the heart of the South China Sea. Now China, Malaysia, the Philippines, and Vietnam claim part of the Parasols and Spartly Islands chain. They have asserted their claims by setting up small ships, ports, and even people on what is essentially a rock in the middle of the ocean. What are the real stakes of these territorial disputes? First and foremost, the natural resources of the region are a very distinctive feature of the South China Sea. Another issue is the geostrategic situation of the disputed area. Furthermore, for the countries around it, the South China Sea is the primary source food accounting for 8% of the world's total commercial fishery production and is responsible for feeding many of today's most populous nations from Pakistan's 226 million people to China's 1.4 billion citizens. As a result, the South China Sea being one of the most important economic and strategic regions in the world is undeniably essential to Southeast Asia's way of life. Tensions escalate from time to time to stop just short of turning into armed conflict. Although the states having interest, push provocation to the maximum, but they have never risked the war that would be particularly deadly in this region, and that would have terrible consequences for the economy and world peace. All in all, the disputes in the South China Sea shows the characteristics of a frozen conflict where none of the states is ready to give up any ground to reach a common solution, accepted by all, and thus any armed conflict could break out at any time. Tensions between China and the Philippines Territorial dispute between China and the Philippines is at increasingly high risk of escalating into a conflict involving the two superpowers. American military bases 
The Philippines announced on April 3rd that the location of four military bases that the U.S. will gain access to have been identified. These bases, an expanded part of the defense agreement between the two countries, will allow the U.S. to approach Taiwan from the south in the event of war and acts as another part of its China containment strategy. The U.S.-Philippines joint military exercise will be the largest exercise in the history of the Philippines. About 9,000 service members took part in the last year's exercise. However, this year, more than 5,000 Philippine troops and more than 12,000 American troops will participate. A U.S. presence at new military facilities in the Philippines as part of its Indo-Pacific strategy will increase the potential for America to influence the situation in the Taiwan Strait and South China Sea. One of the strategic intentions of the U.S. is to build a base on Balabac Island as it could provide future support and logistics in any future military operation in the region. Three of the new bases could be used primarily by American military to respond to any situation in the Taiwan Strait from the south. This could work alongside their bases on the north of Taiwan, specifically those in Okinawa in southern Japan. In this way, the new bases in the Philippines will fill in the gap in the south, which is very important for the implementation of the U.S. containment policy or strategy. For the Americans, the Philippines is an important springboard for operations against China in the South China Sea and the Taiwan Strait. The Philippines has fallen. As the United States and China vie for dominance in the Pacific, the Philippines find itself at the epicenter of geopolitical struggle, with each passing day raising the stakes for the nation and its people. The following are two scenarios that could possibly happen if the tensions between the Philippines and China don't go down. Keep in mind that this is fictional depiction of a geopolitical crisis and does not represent any real world events. The details and outcomes are speculative and intended for dramatic storytelling purposes. Scenario number one, accidental war. In 2027, China pushes to expand its territorial claims to include Second Thomas Shaw, part of the Sparlis Island and only 195 miles from the Philippines. Chinese Marines attempt to intimidate Philippine Marine Corps troops stationed on the beach landing ship Sierra Madre by staging a live fire exercise nearby. But the exercise is mistaken for an assault. Philippine Marines return fire, causing casualties, and Philippine warplanes damage a Chinese Type 071 amphibious landing dock. Poor damage control result in the loss of large warship and heavy loss of life, an embarrassing incident that enrages the Chinese Communist Party. As both sides trade blows, the conflict expands to the Chinese aircraft carrier Shandong conducting airstrikes on Philippine airfields and Chinese cruise missiles striking military bases across the archipelago. America invoking its mutual defense treaty with the Philippines sends its naval forces, backed up by two carrier strike groups and B-1 bombers based on Guam. U.S. and Chinese air and naval forces become directly engaged. The two powers are embroiled in an open-ended conflict no one wanted and no one knows how to stop and the Philippines will be caught in the middle. The second scenario, Taiwan invasion. China believes Taiwan, a self-governing island nation located 100 miles of its coastline, is a renegade part of China that needs to be brought back under Beijing's control. In 2030, after two decades of building up an invasion force, the People's Republic of China commences an invasion of Taiwan. When China makes a bold move to assert control over Taiwan, America uses its military bases in the Philippines to launch precision missiles at key targets in China, including Beijing. Beijing, faced with a direct assault, retaliates by launching missiles targeting American military bases in the Philippines. As the conflict intensifies, the Philippines faces a humanitarian crisis, with displaced families, shortages, and struggle for survival becoming unfortunate reality. In the aftermath of this specific turmoil, the Philippines stands as a testament to the devastating consequences of conflict between giants. As the world watches, the question remains, 
and a nation caught in the middle find a path to recovery and rebuild what has been lost. Do you think the scenarios mentioned in this fictional depiction can possibly happen in the future?